morning.
if you wonder who can do it. And he doesn't have to wait till in the morning. He can do it right now. Who can do it? God can. He can do it. He can do it. He can. God can. If you wonder if it can happen, if you wonder if anybody can do it, let me tell you, God can. He can do it right now. Hallelujah. I said, God can. God can. And if you just want it, if you want it, if it can happen, I just stop by to tell you, God can do it. God can do it. God is able to do it. God can do it. God will do it. The Hebrew boy said if he didn't decide to, it's not because he's able. They said he can do it. God can do it because he is the able God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He is. He is the able. He is the able God. I said God can. He can do it. Amen. Do you believe he can do it? Do you believe that he's able? Do you trust him to make it happen? Whatever you're going through, God can do it. Matter of fact, he can do it right now. He makes a way out of no way. He's a bridge over troubled water. God can do it. Yes, he can. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? God can. God can do it. And God will. Thank God for who he is and what God has already done. He is the great and the awesome God. We thank God that he can and he will do it. Hallelujah to the We're back in Revelation. Revelation chapter 6 is where we are today. The book is Revelation. Revelation chapter 6. The first eight verses is where we will land this morning. Revelation chapter 6. In the New Testament, all the way to the back of your Bible, there's both good news and bad news. I come today to serve up some bad news. It's bad news for those who are not saved and won't be saved. All right. But the good news, Brother Miles talked about this morning, it's the fact that God is still on the throne. Yeah, yeah. And it is good news for those who are saved and those who will be saved. Yeah, yeah. St. John comes talking to us this morning and he's dealing with the four seals. Our pericope is verses 1 through 8. I want to read the first verse and then I will read the passage as we go through it. Revelation chapter 6 verse 1 says, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, with a voice like thunder, come and see. I want to talk about the first four seals. The first four seals. The first four seals. Up to this point, we have acknowledged that the Apostle John is on an island called Patmos, a little bitty island that's about eight miles wide and ten miles long. We've discovered that John is on this island because he's been exiled because he didn't agree with the system. He was there for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. John has been pushed aside. He has been pushed along. He's on this lonely island. There were no organs, no churches, 
No one to say amen. But he hears behind him a great voice. It is the voice of Jesus saying to him, what you hear, write and put it in a book. And when you hear these things, you put it in the book and you send it to the seven churches of Asia Minor. John writes and he begins to write. In chapter 4, he says that he looked up and he saw heaven wide open. And when he saw heaven, he saw church going on. He saw one sitting on the throne. The one sitting on the throne we discovered is God. We also see that there were worshipers there. There were four beastly creatures. There were 24 elders. And they did not cease night and day saying, holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the Lamb, Jesus Christ. He is worthy. Then John goes on in chapter 5 of Revelation to discover and to discuss with us the fact that the one sitting on the throne is worthy to be worshipped. He talks about the fact that God himself is above all other gods and he is worthy to be worshipped. I want to say to you that all these occurrences are futuristic occurrences. <laughs> Regardless of how bad things are right now, this has not taken place yet. And today I serve you a very good dose of the first four seals to remind you how bad it will get. The Bible, the Bible teaches in, in Revelation chapter 6, it says there is a lamb present. And this lamb is Jesus Christ, and he's the only one who is worthy to open the seals. Jesus Christ is worthy when no other angel, no other being is worthy to open the seals. So we find ourselves in chapter 6, and Jesus began to open the seals. And the text declares, now I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the living creatures saying with a voice of like thunder, come and see. The Bible teaches that, that, that we need to look at what's going to happen. All right, all right. Many have said, as Brother Miles said this morning, many have called this a scary book. The book of Revelation is a book where people are very much afraid to read and very much afraid to deal with. It is, for some, a book of horror. Today, we'll, I will paint a picture before you of why people look at it as a book of horror. But the fact of the matter is, it gives us a snapshot of those things that's going to come, and many will go through this tribulation period if they're not born again. Yes, in chapter 4, he paints this picture of heaven. And when he paints this picture of heaven, it paints the idea that we're going to be raptured up. Yes. Paul picks up this thought in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. He says, I have you not to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep. For right. those who have the lively hope in Jesus Christ, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who remain will be caught up together with them in midair. It says, don't, don't be worried, don't be concerned, don't get overly emotional about your loved ones who have fallen asleep in the Lord. Because there will come a day that we will be caught up to meet him in the air. And I've said to you, if the drums are too loud down here, you're not prepared yet. If the organ is too loud, if the piano is too loud, if the saxophone and the keyboard are too loud down here, you better get ready because over yonder, we're going to be praising him all the day long. So let me just share with you this morning the first seal. In verse number one, verse number one, it talks about these creatures that have spoken and, and they heard the creature saying, come up here. And John is shown the first seal. Verse two says, 
And I looked and behold a white horse. He that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. It says to us that we need to understand this morning that everything white ain't right. I just stopped by on my way to heaven and let you know. Just because it's a white horse doesn't mean that Jesus is riding a white horse. As a matter of fact, Jesus didn't show up riding a white horse until we get to Revelation 19 where he comes to fight the battle of Armageddon. So the devil is a great conniver. He is one who can and will fool us. So the text declares the first seal was broken and he looked and he saw a white horse. And this white horse had a rider riding on it. The white horse had a bow in his hand. Now check this out. He had a bow in his hand with no arrow. I, I, I want to let you know. Now look at the text. The text paints a picture of one who has a bow but has no arrow. Everywhere in scripture when you see a bow, it is always followed up with an arrow. Even time we talk about it in the 21st, the 20th century, in the 21st century, we talk about a bow and an arrow. But look at the rider. The rider who rides the white horse has no arrow. The only thing, Brother Urban, he has is a bow. It says to us this morning that the devil will always try to fool you like he's more powerful than God. He's carrying himself around conquering and to conquer. In the midst of moving around, he is given a crown. One thing you need to notice here, when you first see him, when the author talks about him, when John says this thing about this guy who's riding the white horse, he says he has a bow with no arrow, but he doesn't have the crown on yet. The Bible said he was given a crown in the process of time. Now, so that says to us that he is seeking to take leadership all over the world. The Antichrist is the rider on this white horse. The rider is not Christ himself. He's far from being Christ, but he is against Christ. He is the Antichrist. He is the prince of this world. He is. He has come to this world to overtake the world, as Daniel says in his pericopes. He will come peacefully, but he will later become unpeaceful. He will come showing you one thing, and he will give you another thing. Matter of fact, the Lord has allowed our eyes to be shut where we don't see him coming. When I say our, I really mean their eyes. He has allowed eyes to be closed, and God has sent forth a great illusion. Uh, the illusion is just because it's white, you think it's right. The illusion is the ice is colder on the other side of the tracks. The illusion is that, that money is greener on the other side of the bayou. The illusion is that you will never be good enough or better enough in order for you to get where you want to go because of what you have to accomplish. The illusion is that you have to go to an Ivory League school in order to really make it in this life. It's just an illusion. In right. this illusion, men will be conquered and the, this rider will continue conquering. It is, the, it is the analogy of this rider that rises up to leadership. Remember now, he doesn't have a crown on his head when he's first mentioned, but the Bible says, John declares that he was given a crown. In other words, folk put him there. In other words, we come to a point in our lives where we look up to folk so much and we look up to folk as if they are a god. Matter of fact, this person that rides, he will conquer with flattering words. He will conquer by wonders or things. He will conquer because he can do great things that many humans cannot do. I've told you over and over again, the devil may be mighty, but he's not almighty. He, he gives us wonders. He, he gives them wonders. He gives them a great illusion, and he leads them by lies. 
we can see the stage being set even right now. Yeah. Where men will follow men, women will follow men that will that are lying and will go down the drain line and they go down the drain right with them. As a boy, no arrow. He has no real weapon of warfare. How good is the bow if it has no arrow? All right. How well will he be able to conquer? He's conquering through the hearts. He's conquering through the minds. He will rise to the highest ranks. And at that time, they will give him a crown. They will, he will sit on the throne. He will place himself on the throne. And while he's on the throne, he will declare himself as God. You see, leadership makes organizations go forward. Success rises and falls on leadership. Regardless of what happens at the New Beginning Church, I get blamed for it because I'm the leader. You know, it's, it's God's church, and, and Jesus has given his blood for the church. Jesus has died for the church. But the moment something went wrong, then that's Pastor Davis. I've even heard it during the pulling out. Now, let me tell you, I was at home on May 19th at 1133 in the evening at night. I was at home at 2.45 a.m. I was at home. But when someone pulled nearly 2,000 feet of copper, the joker that pulled it out didn't get the blame. It's the leader that got the blame. And I'm all right with that because leadership is important. Leadership is where we hang our hat. And that's what it is in, in Revelation chapter 6. He will rise to leadership. He, will, he is not the devil. He's the antichrist. He is Satan's superman. He's Satan Superman, and he is Satan Superman. He's sitting on the throne. He calls himself God, and people will worship him. Let me tell you, we're not too far away from Revelation chapter 6. We're not too far away from men believing lies and going down the road with lies. The devil is out to conquer, and he is conquering. Sunday school students being bewitched. Church goers who are not saved have fallen into, into this illusion. God has favor. That's the reason why you need to be saved. You've got to be born again. You need to be saved. So the second seal, he opens the book. He, Jesus, cracks the second seal. And he saw there a red horse. And this red horse had a rider. And this red horse in the second seal, look at the text, verse number three. It says, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And that people shall kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. Let me just share with you this morning when the red horse shows up. This red horse will have a rider sitting on it. He will be given a great sword. It didn't say he showed up with the sword. It says he was given a great sword. His objective, his goal, his manner was to take away peace from the earth. We can see, we can see the stage being set right now. Don't blow your horn behind somebody at the red light. Peace will lead the earth. Neighbors will fight against neighbors. Children will fight against their parents. Peace will no longer be on the earth. Matter of fact, it says this red horse brings about an atmosphere of murder and killing. It says the red horse will seduce people to kill one another. Can't you see we're being set up today? Where people that you wouldn't think would be against each other are killing each other. 
brothers killing each other over a peanut butter sandwich. Children being roasted to death in microwaves, talking about they're being sacrificed to their God, their parents' gods. Children are walking away from stable lifestyles because of abusive situations. Let me just share with you, death is on its way. We think it's bad now. We think people are killing people now. It's nothing to be compared when the rider of the red horse shows up. The rider of the red horse will, will induce people and seduce people to kill one another. The rider of the red horse it signifies bloodshed. Signifies bloodshed all over the world. It signifies no peace. It signifies no safety. Just war and murder. When the red horse rides. We're going to see some things, but they will see some things like never before. Those who haven't left in the rapture, they will see some things. There will be no peace until the Prince of Peace shows back up on the earth. The red horse will, will bring death. He will bring murder. He will bring bloodshed. He will be given a sword. And this sword will become the death of so many. Then there is the third seal. When we look at the third seal in verse number five, you find when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not hurt or harm the oil in the wine. When we look at the third horse, he's a black horse. I know, I know you've been taught that every time you see something black, you ought to get back. This is the case in the third seal. The third seal, this rider of the black horse has a, a pair of scales, a pair of balances in his hand. It is much like the scale that we used to hang our sacks on when we were picking cotton in the cotton field. Right. I know you city folk can't identify, but it was a scale. It was a scale, and when, when you put uh, the cotton on this side of the scale, and you put a weight on this side of the scale, it's not until the scale balances out that you can determine how much you have picked for the day. These scales in Revelation chapter 6, the black horse has some scales and it represents food. It represents famine. The rider of this black horse is saying a quart or a measure of wheat for a denarius, meaning for a penny, which means for a day's work. In other words, you can get a quart, two pints of wheat. For a whole day's work. You work all day and you just show up with two pints. And that's what you have to live off. And that's what your children have to live off. You talk about population control. We have to understand that this balances that, that this black horse rider is carrying represents famine. It represents never getting enough food. It represents your children, go, their children going to sleep with pop bellies that are swollen, but there's nothing in it. You cannot get enough. These scales demonstrate that, that you will never get enough, even from a day's work. This is famine. The famine 
You know, it's not what you think it is. You think you're not getting enough food today. Let me tell you, you're not getting enough food because you have chosen not to. But these folk can't get enough food because they can't buy enough. You think what is called shrinkflation is a real thing now? I had a soda water in my hand yesterday. And you know, I don't drink them very often, but it was this big. It was literally three inches tall. It was literally an inch and a half in diameter. Let me tell you, that's enough to make you mad right there. <laughs> I mean, you go, in, and they, they are more expensive now. They, they don't cost what a 12-ounce can costs. I didn't even look at the can and see how many ounces in it. If I got to the car, I sit it down, and I picked it up. I thought I had an empty can. In these days that is talked about with the riding of the black horse, we, you won't be able to get enough food. The rider is a conserver of food. It is a rationing of food. You think they're telling you now that you can't get but one bottle, one case of water now? You won't even get but a bottle and a half then. It's, he is rationing our food. No harvesting of crops are going on. No sowing of crops are going on. Why they not? Because the first two riders have taken the people out. Men gone to war in the second seal. The people have given in to the devil in the first seal. Where there are no men to plant, there's no men to sow, there's no food to be reaped. And so we are living by, they will be living by the law of of good and plenty when there will be no plenty. The law of demand, the, the law where wherever there's a great need, the greater the cost. You no, know, every time they want to raise gas prices, every time, every time they want to raise gas prices, they tell you there's a shortage on gas. Every time they want to raise price on, on construction materials, they, 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 they make them skyrocketed in price. Have you noticed during the summertime when family's on vacation, gas always goes up right around May? Have you noticed that in August, it doesn't matter who's the president, doesn't matter who dominates the Congress, every time around August you can see a fall. And this week the commentator said this, he said you can get to love these low gas prices, but don't take a victory left, left yet. It's just momentary. It's just for a while. It's just, it's just for a while that you're going to take this victory lap because the same price is going to go up again. You can't afford food because you have a little money. Then he goes on to say, he goes on to say to us today that don't hurt the, the oil in the wine. It says not to hurt the oil in the wine. He's saying to us that the olive trees and the grapevine will not be affected because they're going to be needed for the sake of medical supplies. They will be needed for, for medical supplies. They will be needed in order for those people who've been wounded in war, those people who are left over from the killing, they're going to be needed. The oil and the wine will be needed for medical Supplies. Then comes the fourth seal. And the fourth seal is a pale horse. It's a yellowish green horse. It is a horse whose rider is death. And let me tell you, death is coming. Death is on his way. Death was riding, and the one that followed death is Hades. It's not hell, but it is the common grave. The fourth seal is found in verse number seven and verse number eight. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold a pale horse. In the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him. And the power was given to them over the fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, 
with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. There will come a day when the fourth horse rides. It will be a pale horse. This pale horse is a sickly green, yellowish green horse. And he's coming and his rider is death. In Hades follows close behind. Hades is the grave and, and as people are killed, as people are maimed, uh, death will take over their lives. In Hades, the common grave will follow death. He will open his mouth wide, Hades will, in order to swallow up those which death has taken out. Let me tell you, that's coming the day where, where Hades, where, where the grave will have to be enlarged. You think people died during COVID-19? During COVID I mean, it was like one funeral for a while, one funeral after the other. You call a funeral home to set up a funeral, they don't have space because they got three, four, five, six funerals in the same day. Then they had to move from Saturdays to Sundays and move from Sundays to Monday and Monday to Tuesday because so many people were dying. Let me just share with you, when you look at this fourth seal and you find this pale horse riding and you see death, it will be worse than the high days of COVID-19. We saw during COVID-19 they use refrigerator trucks, freezer trucks to stack bodies in from the top all the way up to the top and all the way from the front to the back. We thought that that was miserable. We thought that families wasn't getting justice. But you can't leave them out without refrigerating them. In these days that is talked about when the fourth rider rides, when the pale horse shows up, death will be unheard of, yeah. unimaginable. Let me tell you, you don't want to be here when the seals are open. You don't want to be around when, when death is riding. You don't want to be around when the grave is right behind him. There will be destruction of human life like never before. There will be destruction of human life that you can't even imagine. People will be wiped out. And it doesn't matter if it's your loved one or not. It's our responsibility to get our loved ones saved today. We have to work toward getting them saved today. We have to become the catalyst today. So when they do die, it doesn't matter because they'll be out of here before the pale horse rides. They'll be out of here before the white horse rides. They'll be out of here before the, the red horse rides. They'll be out of here before this pale horse takes a stand. Our responsibility is to call men to Christ, to accept him by faith. It's our responsibility, once you have been saved, to tell other people about your Savior. It is our responsibility to evangelize so the beast and the pestilence won't take over our loved ones. We pass folk every day. We look at people every day. We avoid people every day when we ought to be leading them to Christ. We ought to be telling them about Jesus. We ought to be instructing them about the Lord who has blessed us again. Make it your purpose. Get it in your heart to lead people to Christ. So they won't be around when the, the first horse rides. They won't be around when the second horse rides. They won't be around when the third horse rides. And they won't be around when the fourth horse rides. If you notice, in the first three seals, they didn't name the riders. They just described the riders. But the fourth seal, they give the rider a name. His name is death. And death is going to overtake you. You ought to leave this service today. You ought to leave my hearing today. Looking for somebody that you can get in touch with God and get them in touch with God. You have to leave this place today looking for somebody you can lead to Christ. You got to leave this place today telling somebody about Jesus who died over 2,000 years ago. You 
got to tell somebody about the Son of God. You got to tell somebody that he voluntarily gave his life as a ransom for you and me. You need to tell somebody that Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. Tell somebody that they buried him in a borrowed tomb. Tell somebody that all of that Thursday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And let them know, if you can just believe the story, that in Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. If you can just believe the story, you can leave here and go to heaven when you die. You don't have to worry about the riding of the four horses. You can be saved right here, right now, in this room. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. That's this riding. People are losing their lives. And we're just watching them go to hell in a handbasket. It's our responsibility to introduce them to Christ. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a deacon. You don't have to be a missionary. But you need to tell them the story. That Jesus is waiting. Let them know that if no one else loves you. Jesus loves you. If no one else can put up with you, God loves you and has an awful, a great, awesome plan for your life. If your blessings hadn't come yet, you need to be running and telling somebody that Jesus died for you. And if there was no one on planet Earth but you, he would have died just for you. You need to tell somebody that he got up for him. And if it had not been for Jesus, in hell I would lift my eyes. You need to tell them of when you were bad. You need to tell them how God has changed your life. You, used to, you need to tell them what you used to do. That God can appreciate so that they can get it right like you got it right. And when you tell them, don't be pious about it. Don't look down your nose at them. You need to tell them that God is not through with me yet. And I'm still rising and falling every day. Don't act like you just step out of the clouds. Make sure you let them know that your stuff is still dirty too. Don't focus on their sin. Don't focus on their sin. Because it was just yesterday that you had sin. Matter of fact, it was just this morning. Matter of fact, it was just a few seconds ago. Don't focus on their sin. Focus on the great conquering king of Calvary. Jesus himself. Introduce your children to Christ. The little baby, the little grandbaby that you love so much, they're never too young to be introduced to Christ. While you're in the mall, ask God to, to create an opportunity for you to lead somebody to Christ. While you're in the restroom gossiping, ask God to give you somebody that will you can introduce to Christ. While you're at work and, and the moment is right, ask God to set the stage. Set the stage for you to get to know him well enough for you can introduce him to somebody else. Life is so uncertain, but death is certain. And since death is certain, we want people to get to know Jesus. We want him, the, the phone calls that you get, the robo calls, the selling calls, Always be able to turn the conversation toward Jesus. Stop hanging up on him. Stop cussing him out. Stop telling him don't call you anymore. Because you call, when you tell them don't call you, they keep calling you. They just call you from another, uh, another number. Take a moment. Take an opportunity. Just to introduce them to Christ. 
So every time you get a robocall, every time you get a, a spam call, answer it and say, hello, how are you? And when they ask you, you want to buy something, tell them, Jesus already paid it. He paid it all on Calvary. Mr. What you talking about? I'm talking about the conquering king of Calvary. I'm talking about Jesus the Christ. He died for you. And he died for me. And one of these days, if you don't accept him now, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess. And if they haven't hung up by then, they want to hear from you. God has set the stage for you. God has set you up. You can tell them that they can miss the first four seals. They don't have to be around when the white horse shows up and create a delusion or an illusion when the Antichrist takes over. You can tell them that they don't have to be around when the black horse shows up. They don't have to be around when the red horse shows up. And this red horse represents bloodshed. They don't have to be around when, when famine shows up. And this black horse represents famine, not enough food. And tell them they don't have to be around when the pale horse shows up. Because when the pale horse shows up, the rider is dead. And his partner is the grave. And the grave is opening its mouth wide for those that death has victimized. And then you can tell them you don't have to face death. But you can have life evermore. You can tell them that Jesus offers life. And if you are living and breathing and you don't have Jesus, you're not living yet. You're just existing. Because Jesus gives life abundantly. There may be somebody here today. There may be somebody listening today who need to know Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can trust him today. You can believe him today. You can trust Jesus the Christ. You don't have to wait until the seals are broken. You can go now to heaven. You can qualify today. Will you accept him? Will you trust him? Will you believe him? If this is you and you believe that Jesus died and rose again, would you just please join me in prayer? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you're now born again. You're on your way to heaven when you die. We believe that you're going to join the four beastly creatures. We believe that you're going to join the 24 elders celebrating who God is, celebrating who Jesus is. We believe that the spirit, we think the spirit gets high here. We believe the spirit of God will be present and we will forever be with the Lord. That may be some of you who were in between church homes or you don't have a church home or, or you've been out of church since COVID. This is your moment. And I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. You can come now or you can inbox us and let us know you, you have made the New Beginning Church your home. There may be others of you who struggle with sin like I do. The Apostle Paul says, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. The Apostle Paul says, there's a war going on within me. 
and this war is bringing me into captivity of sin. It says in Romans chapter 7 that, that I wrestle with him. I'm just trying to do right. I, I've been born again. I, I want to do right, but carnality is taking place. And every time I look up, carnality is pulling me back. It got so bad with the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7. He says in verse 24, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am. Who's going to deliver me from this battle, from this death? This word wretched means oh, burden man that I am. I'm beat up, I'm beat down. Who's going to deliver me? Thank God for verse 25. Romans 7, 25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ I shall be delivered. And if you're going to be delivered from anything you're going through, it's going to take Jesus. It's going to take Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his word. Thank God for the Lamb of God. All for Christ in you. The door is open. The door is open. We offer Christ. Oh, my sister. He will give you brand new life. New life. Come on, come on, come on. Christ to you. blessing us. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be able to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, raise your hand real high and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. For those of you who are giving electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for money. We thank you for increase. We thank you for income. We thank you, Father God, for jobs. We thank you for this opportunity to give unto you. We pray for every giver. Bless us to give from our heart and bless us to give not grudgingly nor out of necessity. But Lord, we know you love a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Lord, ask this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. Lord, ask this side to stand. Follow the lady that has run off and left y'all. Follow the lady here. And, and come and give. Give unto the Lord. Jesus. 
decorative invitation here, a very decorative card. It has two rings in it, look like a male ring and a female ring. Together with their families, Lou Matthews and Michael Irvin invite you to join them as they say I do. Saturday, the 1st of October, 2022 at 4 p.m. at the Holy Trinity Church. So Sister Lou Matthews, will you say it? This is Sister Lou Matthews. She will soon be Sister Lou Irvin. She's sitting with the family today to get acclimated. She's sitting with the family. So we're going to have two guys here that look like that guy. Can you imagine two guys look like that guy? So uh, she's marrying Brother, brother Irvin's brother. Michael Irvin is his name on October the 1st. And uh, I know you all were wondering why they so cozy these days. She's trying to get acclimated. She's trying to figure them out. Trying to see if she really want to be a part of this family here. Thank you, Sister Matthews. We, we rejoice with you. We're looking forward to a great time in the Lord on October 1st at 4 o'clock. It gets started promptly at 4 p.m. at the Holy Trinity Church. Amen. Amen. Ma'am. Twelve years in the making. Twelve years in the making. She said she's been dating 12 years. She's been cold. 12 years. She's been skipping out of town for 12 years. That's what she just said. She said, he's been skipping in here for 12 years. She said, he, she's been hiding him for 12 years. My, 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 12 years. Good God Almighty. I guess the 12th year means something. I don't know what it means, you know. Church folk always put, put some on. So, the you raise your hand. You, 12. 12. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand so you could announce who you get married to. Oh, my goodness. I was like, good God. Just make sure they come on to church. That's all. Just make sure they come, come to the church house. Amen. So congratulations, Sister Matthews. We look forward to you being an Irvin. Amen. 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 She already sitting with the family. Like she, it's my family here. Amen. Thank God. We're always glad when two families come together in holy matrimony. Let me just put it this way. We are so happy when a male and a female come together in holy matrimony. Amen. A man and a woman come together in holy matrimony. We, we are so glad that God is blessed. Amen. During our, during our prayer time, we want to lift in prayer. We want to lift in prayer Sister Cheryl Barney, Omar Gavan, uh, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Nicole Davis and family, Audrey Johnson, Jimena Ortiz, Joe Nathan Brownlee, Ed and Emma Brandon, Megan Davis and Amity Hunter. I know you see Sister Ann Paul on here. We're praying for her too. She needs much prayer, much fasting. Uh, not because of bereavement now. She just needs much prayer, much fasting. Uh, not because of her brother's death, but she needs much prayer and a whole heap of fasting. Amen. Pray mightily. Amen. So we're going to take her off next week and y'all just continue to pray for her. All right. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, for these who are listed. We pray that you bless their lives, heal their bodies, bless their hearts, regulate their minds and their hearts, Father God. Lord, give them miracles. Bless them, Father God, in a mighty way. Keep them safe. Keep them focused. Father God, we ask you to bless them them in such a way that blessings will run them down, that they will see you as never before, that they will experience God like never before. Arrest their hearts, arrest their minds, and bless them, Father God, to receive the blessings for which they have been praying. Lord, we ask you to do what nobody else can do, nobody but God, and we know you're the one who can do it, and we're coming to you, Father God, because you can. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Let's go in believing. Let's go in peace. Let's go in structure that we can trust him as he has, has blessed us. Let us stand to our feet. Our mission and vision statement.
like, okay, let's start over for a minute. Let's 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 do our mission and vision statement. Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We honor you. We praise you. God, we thank you, Father God, that we don't have to go through the life in the seals. We thank you, Father God, that we don't have to go through chapter 6 because we can be out of here in chapter 4. We thank you, Lord, that we're looking forward to seeing a new heaven and a new earth. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to be saved, sanctified, and filled with your precious Holy Ghost. We thank you for what Jesus has already done. We realize, Father God, it's only you who, are, who is keeping us. It's only you who is blessing us. We ask you to bless us, Father God, to be encouraged to live on by the book and that the book will set our hearts on fire, that we will run and tell everybody else about this person called Jesus. It's in the power of the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank God. Brother Miles, somebody get that right quick for me, right quick.